Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to tell a story about a man and his little dream come true. His name is Toontje, and I would see Toontje every day sitting in the park. So one day, I introduced myself to him and asked if I could photograph him. He seemed glad, quite glad with the attention. We became friends, and for the next two and a half years, I documented his life. You see, Toontje was homeless, but what was quite remarkable was that he was also physically disabled. He was born spastic and therefore could not walk. He moved around on a tricycle. On the back of his tricycle, he would have a little suitcase in which he kept some of his belongings. It would be filled with beer bottles, and most of them were full in the morning. In the afternoon, they definitely were empty. Tonche would sleep on a bench, or sometimes, if it would get cold, in a bus shelter. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, being disabled and homeless is not easy. But Tone, at times, enjoyed his freedom and the small things that life had to offer. <laughs> now, Tone would... <laughs> small things. Tone would collect his unemployment money once a month at the bank, and then he would hit to town. <laughs> You could find Tone in the park with one of his uh, temporary girlfriends, or I would look him up in the evening in his favorite bar where he would give away rounds, he would sing, he would laugh, he would make fun, and if he had enough, they would carry him out and Tone was back on his tricycle to his favorite bus shelter. Tone had two good friends. One of them was Nico. He and Nico met up every day at the shopping mall. Now, Nico shared the same passion like Tone for drinking lots of beer. And sometimes, actually all the time, the law would come by every day to see that their passion didn't get out of hand. The other good friend was Desiree, which was Nico's girlfriend. Desiree had a little apartment in the center of town there she would invite Tone at her home. They would cuddle on the couch. Tone would be secretly in love with Desiree. And at a certain point, he also got along very well with Wode on the dog, much to the disliking of the neighbors. At one point, Tone just moved in. He did his fair share in the householding. And he and Nico would go out daily to do shopping. Of course, that meant buying lots of cans of beer at the supermarket. And they would hang in Desiree's apartment. Now, sometimes Desiree and Nico would clash. Drinking lots of beer, uh, they would start yelling, fighting, and Nico was also at times forced to sleep outside, taking with him Tone to have some company. The next day, Tone would try to comfort Daisy Ray. She would invite Tone back to her apartment where Tone could witness the damage done, the ravage by the bad temper Nico had. But Nico, who would be sober again the next day, would try to make up. He would buy a new stereo equipment with a new video recorder. And of course, Tone with his tricycle would come in very handy for the transportation. So the three of them lived together again. They would clean up the place, and it's, they would try to have a good time. Then one evening, something very terribly happened. I was there when Nico prepared a dinner, and Desiree came home really very drunk. All of a sudden, they started really fighting each other. I, my, my heart was beating in my throat as I tried to take pictures and keep my cool. But it happened very fast, and Desiree was really pushed to the ground, crying and yelling. Somehow, she managed to get into the kitchen where she took a knife and stabbed Nico in his stomach. This is what I witnessed and tried to phot photograph. Nico would call the police, and they came quite swiftly, taking away Desiree to the police station, where she would spend the next 14 years in jail, uh, 14 months in jail, sorry. Of course, Nico and Tone were not allowed to stay in the apartment, 
poor Tone was out on the street again, left homeless. Now, there were more people who were concerned about Tone. One of them was Miss Yanni. Miss Yanni would come every day to visit Tone in the park, and she'd prepare some food and give him something decent to eat. She also made an appointment at Town Hall to see if some officials could help Tone get his own place to live. In the end, Tone did sign a paper, but not much happened. Tone still was sleeping in one of his favorite bus shelters. And one night when it was really freezing very hard, I invited Tone into the hall of my apartment. But there, other tenants made complaints, and the next morning, he had to live, leave. I asked Tone if he had any real big dreams. He said, yes, I have one. I would like to go to Lourdes in South France, a famous pilgrimage place. As a child, the class he, he was going to, they went on an excursion to Lourdes, and everybody had a good time except Tone. Now, I found out that Tone's medical insurance company would send some of their patients every year on a pilgrimage to Lourdes. And before I knew it, the both of us were on a plane to Lourdes. <laughs> he was enjoying the holy water Lourdes had to offer. And I would push Tone around in his wheel wheelchair. We would visit some churches during the day, but pretty soon we would also visit one of the many pubs or bars Lourdes has to offer. And everybody seemed to like this little tramp from Nijmegen. He was even, uh, he was even called <laughs> to hold the flag in the big procession at the end of the week. I clearly, clearly remember the last evening when I saw Tone go to bed. White sheets, clean, and I knew that the next day he would be sleeping outside again. But miracles don't only happen in Lourdes. Sometimes they also happen in Nijmegen. In Nijmegen, after we came back, he was offered a room in a house uh, run by Iris Sorg. Now, Iris Sorg made a house for the poor and homeless people. And there he has his own cozy room now, and he fills his days uh, coloring in drawings. And at a quarter to four, everybody rushes to the canteen to get their daily ration of four beer. <laughs> I still see Tone sometimes in the park, sometimes with his new girlfriend, Bea, on the back of his tricycle. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the happy end of a true story and a little dream come true. Thank you very much.